Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to Her Majesty Blog and tonight we're bringing you a bonus episode. Yep, that is amazing, right? Yes, we're not used to being on a live on a Friday but we are here and we are interviewing the phenomenal and amazing Miss Nompumelelo Maduna who was in the top five of Miss South Africa in 2019 and is the founder of Mbumi Pageants. So we want to find out from her what life is like after participating in one of the biggest pageants in the country and to tell us more about Mbumi pageants and who can enter and everything else in the process. So please stay put, show us some love. Hello. Okay, I won't be able to wave at everyone during the process, but hi, hi to everyone who's in at the moment. Hi, Let's Editha and Miss Glam South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and show us some love. Say anything on the comment section, wave, hearts, flames, anything. <laughs> Please show us some love. So as we wait for Mpumi Pageants to join the live, let me wave. Yes, so we're waiting for Mpumi Pageants to send the request and join the live. Hi, Temo. Ah, there's Mpumi pageants. Yes, I just wave at them, so I'm just waiting for them to send a request. Hi, Mpumi, please send us a request so we can let you in on the live. There. Coming. Hello there. Hi! <laughs> lovely to finally meet you. Look, lovely to finally meet you as well. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm so excited. Unfortunately, like I said yesterday, I don't have an Instagram account. <laughs> I don't have an Instagram account on a personal level. So you are checking yeah, so, for the first time. <laughs> no, you know, you, you've got to know who you're going to be sitting on the table with. So I had to, I had to find out who she is. Now I know. <laughs> now you the know. main blogger. <laughs> no thank you so much for joining us this evening you look gorgeous by the way thank you so much just like you <laughs> thank you so to start things off i did tell the viewers that of course you're in the top five of miss south africa in 2019 congratulations yes and you are Thank the founder you. of Mpumi Pageants. So please yes. let us in on Mpumi Pageants and what it's all about and its foundational purpose. Okay, sure. So Mpumi Pageants initially started after my Miss South Africa journey. It yes. has been something I had already been doing, right? So uh -huh. I converted it into a coaching business. It was initially a mentorship business. Um, because, you know, I felt that when I went through my pageant journey, it was something really great when I had someone who was mentoring me through my path, who was sharing oh. their experiences, who was guiding me on what mm. the judges are looking for, what makes you stand out, how to build a better confident you. And I so felt that after my journey at Miss South Africa, I need to share this with other women who have a dream mm -hmm. of becoming Miss South Africa, Miss Common, Miss, Miss World, Miss, you name it. Mm. And that's why I initially started it, because I wanted to empower young women who actually saw more than themselves as just mm -hmm. walking on that stage, but also so that they know that they can achieve so much more than just entering a beauty pageant. So mm. that's why the whole slogan is getting you one step closer to your crown, because I want them to know that, you know, after the whole pageant journey, there's so much more that you can still go on and achieve. That's the beauty yes. of life. So yeah, that's a little bit of the journey behind Bumi Pageants. And who can join in on Mpumi Pageants? We have our males who also follow our page. We have teenagers. We have mm -hmm. adults. So what is the criteria? Okay. So essentially, Mpumi Pageants was focused on a woman empowerment program, right? Mm. I've opened myself up um, into a confidence coach, which I also focus on at the Model Academy. So I do a lot of things. You know, we are multifaceted as you know. Um, yes. So I do a lot of things and it doesn't mean that males cannot come to my sessions mm -hmm. as well. I host private sessions. I host confidence sessions. So I'm trying to broad, um, broaden the horizon in offering more than just empowering women. You yes. know, because there's also young gentlemen who would love to go into the pageant industry, would love to build just their self-confidence for the working world. So mm -hmm. that's where the direction is going now. Yeah. 
Yeah. So speaking of modeling as well, I'm always conflicted. What is the difference between pageantry and modeling? Okay, so there is quite a difference. Um, the modeling mm-hmm. industry is quite focused on the advertising, the marketing. Um, it's not necessarily always about us. <laughs> it's normally <laughs> about the brand. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, when you look at the pageant world as well, you know, it's more about being that ambassador for your country, being a representative that goes to, you know, make a difference in so many mm. ways and achieve so much more. Um, I mean, it, you know, it doesn't mean that you can go into the pageant industry and you can't be a model or you can't just be both, right? Yes. Um, you really can. There is just a slight difference. You know, in the pageant world, you really are a beacon of hope. You are a change maker. You, I mean, I don't even know. You, I can say all the words. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go into that industry also to enhance your confidence. The yes. thing that I love about both industries is that, you know, through the journey of becoming a model and going into the pageant industry, there's mm-hmm. an element of building your self-confidence in that process because, you know, you go through a growth phase in becoming mm-hmm. that supermodel or in becoming that Miss South Africa or Miss World that you're going to become one day. So that's what I love between them is that there's a great linkage in mm. building your career in the direction that you want to go, whereas it's in the pageant industry or it's in the modeling industry. That's what I love about them. Yeah. And do you think that you have an added advantage if you are a model and you enter a pageant? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say you have an added advantage. I would mm. say you have an enhanced chance of winning um, yes. because you have built a certain confidence within yourself, right? And mm-hmm. not to say that if you've never modeled before, you can't win. It's just there's a certain element where you're more comfortable when you're in front of the camera, where you're more yes. comfortable in being around a certain, you know, group of people rather when yes. you haven't had any experience at all and you're jumping into a pageant. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so much better when you've built your confidence in front of the camera and you're so comfortable with so many elements around you. And now mm-hmm. that you have to stand on the stage and you've never had any modeling experience, um, it can be a little bit different, right? So I'm speaking from a side of having the experience where I did go into yes. the modeling world and I did go into the pattern world and I've seen how both of them actually work hand in hand in whichever mm-hmm. direction you want to go. So, I yes. mean, I wouldn't say start with the pageant world and then go into modeling or start with the modeling mm-hmm. world and go into pageantry. Whatever fits your, you know, your, your, your direction that you really want to go into, they both really work well hand in hand. I really, I am so for that. Mm-hmm. All right. And so I'm a pageant nerd now, um, meaning that I follow pageants to the T. <laughs> mm-hmm. So usually when, when we get into your profiles as the pageant queens mm-hmm. and participants, we see that most of them have model slash this slash that slash that. What role do you think social media actually plays? And one thing that I've noticed, for example, when I follow someone with this account, I see that mm. 15 other people or 25 other people are already following this account. This means that mm. there's a sort of like a network going on between the mm. pa- in the pageant world in general. So what role do you mm. think social media or Instagram or social media as a whole actually plays in terms of you becoming a better pageant girl, if I put it that way? I mean, we live in a small world. Um, mm. Just going back to you saying that it's a network. Um, yes. that you start to see that we follow each other. It's a small world. And we interact with each other in so many different levels. I mean, you'll mm-hmm. find that today we're speaking like this, tomorrow I'm judging a pageant that you entering. You know, you just, you never know. <laughs> you, really, you really never know. And the network starts to also build, you know, what's going through. Remember when you go into the modeling world, you also go through a lot of casting. In addition, mm. then you try and find the best, agency that fits your personality that you've got a great connection with and the same applies to the pageant world you enter once twice third time and eventually mm. you stand a chance of you know you get closer to winning because you've grown so much so yes. with social media i think it's very important to manage your brand as the way you want it to be received mm. and um which which is why i would say if you're entering a pageant such like miss south africa you know start mm-hmm. showing that you know you Walk in the shoes of becoming the Miss South Africa. Don't only mm-hmm. start to, you know, portray a Miss South Africa now that you're going to enter, you know. Yeah. Start living it already now. If you're going to start modeling, start portraying your social media as the person who's going to be 
uh, a model at Boss Models or a model mm-hmm. at, at My Friend Ned, whichever agency that you're deciding to go to, rather mm-hmm. than having a cluttered social media page. You know, social media is also very tricky. Um, even when you are going to possess yourself, um, position yourself excuse me, as a brand, right? Yes. It does not mean that you don't need to share your personal lifestyle um, to a certain extent. Or mm-hmm. even if it means finding yourself as a brand and creating two different pages, your personal page yes. and your brand page, you know, so yes. that you can grow as an influencer to become a model. You know, we have influencers, micro-influencers as well who are starting to become models as well. So mm-hmm. there's, there's no limitation. There's endless possibilities, actually. And there's so many opportunities for people to go into the industry and have very minimal limitations, actually, into going into it. Yeah. But social media, very important. Yes. Yeah. Position yourself as the brand that you want to be seen as. Yeah. So I should mm-hmm. start that Instagram account, right? <laughs> <laughs> After this live, I'm starting an Instagram account. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we talk to you. Everybody's always watching, you know. I mean, yeah. everyone's always watching. As much as you mm. might think they're not liking your pictures, there's a little uh, video I saw on TikTok the other day. You'll get mm. five likes on a picture, but 500 people are watching your story. That's because someone is always watching. Someone is yes. always looking. You know, I always say to people, the first point of contact in this new digital era is that people mm. are looking at your social media before your CV. Like, they look at your name, your surname, they find you on social media. So however you choose to represent yourself with a bottle of yes. Savannah and you want to be the next business analyst, you know, it just, it, <laughs> you know, just be mindful of the brand that you're positioning yourself as. So, yes. Yeah, it can be very tricky. You don't want to deter yourself from great opportunities mm. because of this other image, what do they call it, an alter ego that you're showing on social media and then you want yeah. to position yourself as, I want to be the next Miss South Africa or I want to be the next Miss Teenager South Africa. So, mm. yeah, it's just very important to be mindful of the way you position yourself on those pages. All right, so confidence mm. building is one of mm. the functions or what you deal with at Boomi Pageants. Mm. What, in your opinion, is a confident person? What, 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 what looks like or what is portrayed or someone who looks like a confident person, what are their characteristics? Oh, they fake it till they make it. Okay, now I'm kidding. Um, but, <laughs> you know, with confidence, you're not really born with it. You know, that's my yes. personal perception about it. Mm-hmm. And I think it is, you know, a journey that you've taken and you've grown into becoming confident because of the experiences that you've had. And mm-hmm. if I had to define a confident person, it's really someone who believes in achieving whatever goals they want to achieve, whatever ambitions they have, and they put aside all the negatives. Oh, my mom is calling to join. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how. Um, I have to but yeah. You're going to have to explain. You know, mothers, you miss a call. Then I know. They... Ish, now I must, I must tell her what's happening. Yeah, she doesn't know how to join a live, so I'm going to explain that later. But yeah, a confident person is definitely someone who truly believes in themselves, who truly mm-hmm. can stand in front of a crowd and say, look, I don't care whoever says what about the person that I am, what I'm wearing, mm-hmm. how I'm doing this. And you know, there's something that I always share is that whatever you're going into, you can wear mm-hmm. a plastic bag and you will make it. And simply because of that confident in a person that shines out, like there is no tomorrow, who can stand yes. in front of anything, anyhow, and say their truth and speak their truth as honest as they can, as brave as they can. So, you know, it's not really written confident. You know, it's yes. the way we portray ourselves to say that mm-hmm. we are truly confident. Yeah? Great. I like that you mm-hmm. said confidence. We're not really born with it. It's something that we can develop as well. And Platforms like Mpumi Pageants are, of course, there um, to assist young people in order to make it yeah. in this industry. And speaking of this industry, so wh- what happens after participating in the biggest pageant in the country like Miss South Africa? <laughs> wh- where do you go now? I've always wondered <laughs> what happens afterwards. You're in the top five. Can you enter again? Hmm. What now? Um, definitely I can enter again. Um, and I think, you know, the biggest thing about going through a journey like that is that you have to carry yourself already when you're entering in such a way that you've already redefined your, your response to what a win is. Um, Mm. because there's only one girl at the end of the day. And of course, out of 
15, 16, 20, 10 of you, you think you are the winner, right? There's no, there's no upside about this. I am the winner. I'm the one that's going to stand on that stage and be crowned on that night. So um, the way I approach um, certain instances like going through a Miss South Africa competition is that I had already known what I want to do with the platform. So mm -hmm. once I didn't win, I already defined my win because in my terms, how I approached the Miss South Africa competition, I had already won. And mm -hmm. I say that because I wanted to really use the platform for more enhancement and empowerment within our youth mm -hmm. and our communities. And I've already done that. And I'm still doing that um, in many different aspects. You know, when, when I train some of the girls, they always ask me, um, oh, my gosh, I don't do anything in community. And I said, what conversations have you had that have changed yes. people's lives? That's the mm. small difference that you've made. There's no such thing as small difference. It's a difference mm -hmm. that you've actually made. And, um, yeah, I think after Miss South Africa, there's just so much um, to explore, to go for. And I've done that, and I'm still doing that. Um, there's lots. I mean, I'm doing what I'm studying now. You know, there's yes. so many achievements that are, are your own way of saying that mm. I'm one. So, yeah, it's not just about a title or a crown. Mm. And, just also one thing that I've realized is that you'll always be a Miss South Africa to everybody else around you. Whether yes. you didn't win, whether you didn't go international, you will forever be the girl who wore that crown on that stage and walked it. And it, they yes. don't even, some people don't even understand how the competition works. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So you carry so much weight for your community. And I grew up in um, Soweto and my people, yes. Till today, they, I mean, I don't, my name is not even Mpomi or Numpumelelo anymore, you know, or Matuna. It is now Miss South Africa, you know, Miss Sarah. Hey. That's become, <laughs> you know, that emblem that you grow with, you know, just going through that opportunity and that platform. So, yeah, it's really, there's so much on the horizon to explore. To explore. Amazing. And mm -hmm. speaking of community, are you involved in any community projects at the moment? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm glad you're asking. You know, um, a lot of people who do enter the pageant world um, are always faced with the question of what are they doing? Are they giving back to community? How are they mm. doing it? You know? And I think it's one thing to define what giving back is um, and, and is it coming from the heart, you know? Mm -hmm. Because we do it because we must do it and post it on social media. And it doesn't have to be that, you know, as much as it is a selfish act of kindness, it doesn't have to be something that speaks volumes all the time in social media. As long as you fulfilled yourself and you bought a grocery pack for the security guard, you've done your part. You know, you've really made a difference in some way in this country because someone tonight is going to have a meal maybe for the next five days. So um, I do give back and I do it in multiple ways, but I decided to start the Maduna Foundation with uh, two of my family members. Because, you know, there's so many people who come to you and reach out and say, how can we contribute? Where do we put the funds? How, how do we get involved? And yes. it's just so much better to have something that is more, um, you know, that is registered, that is trusted. Um, and it is quite focused, you know, I'm trying to reposition the brand at the moment to focus on people who actually have dreams that they want to achieve. So if someone wants to go to a shift school and they're slightly underprivileged or can't raise the funds, we do our best to sort of raise the funds for them, at least give them a starting kit to get there. So, yeah, so that's, that's the, the, the step that I've taken in the past couple of months, just to reposition ourselves as change makers, as dream chasers. You know, there's so many projects that everyone else is also doing. Um, I feel like we mm. also forget about the creative dreams that we all have. Some of us want to be soccer players. Some of us want to be musicians. And it just starts yes. with that one instrument that costs 5,000 rand that I can't afford, right? And that's all it takes. Um, that's the part that we're taking now. Yeah. That we're taking now. And the reason why we're asking this question is because we had a chat last time um, as the bloggers, just the two mm -hmm. of us on the live. And we we're talking about leaving a legacy when it comes to charity work in pageants. Like you said at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, you take part in, in a charity organization just for the sake of the pageant. And what we wanted to know mm -hmm. from you as someone who has participated, of course, in the biggest pageant in the country, once you are involved mm -hmm. in, that, um, in those charity organizations, can you still go back or do you still go back or is everything cut off from there? Absolutely. I mean... You know, I think at the end of the day, we're all human. We can mm -hmm. only do the part that we can do when we can. 
is all yes. sorts of issues that we undergoing personally um, mm-hmm. within our families so you know it's it's a lot of pressure to put on yourself to commit to something um entirely when you haven't found the time to deal with your own personal issues so you know it it, it is something that we try to do you know within the passion world it's great when you that's why I always say it comes from the heart you know yes. once you start engaging for the session community you start to grow with them and you're like oh my gosh every december i'm going to make sure i raise funds to take some grocery packs to the charity home you know and it's it's not the worst case when you can't commit to something anymore you know like mm. i'm saying we are human at the end of the day we do our best part when we can um, yes. and 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 that's why it's very important to decide on the charity project that you want to do it has to be from mm. the heart you know if you believe that you know sanitary drives are the way and you've identified a school where you know that there are girls who aren't going to school because they don't have enough sanitary care absolutely then go for it and do it or you know it it goes you know it goes as far as um simplicity going yeah. into a five girls every month and buying sanitary pads this 10 rand 999 for sanitary mm. pads a click that's all it takes but we always feel like we're not doing enough that's also another problem we always feel like we need to do more we need to go all out it needs to be documented on social media if it's not on social media it wasn't done you know yes. and the and it mm-hmm. starts with us and how we feel when we start to make that difference and does it resonate with the project that you really want to do or are you just doing it so um, yeah that's my views on 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 charity projects and charity projects so mm-hmm. moving on to a bigger scale I had I had to ask mm. this. It sounds like one of the questions that they asked to um to um the top 5 contestants at the South Africa. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like one of them. Yeah. So I'm going to start a challenge yeah. right now. <laughs> If you were president of the country at the moment, how would you deal with the current COVID-19 pandemic or what would you do differently given the effects that it's having on the economy, on people in general, health, mental health, unemployment, employment and everything mm. else in the process? nobody expected this firstly um this is a monster that we're dealing with and mm-hmm. you know i don't think the president you know anticipated anything like this and how to handle it look i know there's certain instances where we should be prepared as a country right yes. there's a certain extent where we are right and then there's mm-hmm. a certain extent where we just shocked we we moved by surprise by this mm-hmm. monster of a pandemic that we actually can't deal with whole heartedly we cannot stand it right and mm-hmm. you know any advice that i'd give to the president at this point or a conversation that i would have to have with them is yes. i i think they've put their best foot forward and um still done his part at, at his best ability it's a lot mm-hmm. as well um to be a president i wouldn't know i've never been one and it is something to have the whole country on your shoulders and yes. these certain circumstances have obviously occurred where the unemployment rate has rocketed because businesses were not prepared for this businesses mm-hmm. had to uh, you know have contingency plans that weren't even there um mm-hmm. and as the president i mean you know the best thing right now is for our health to be the first priority and the the certain restrictions that been have been implicated i think mm-hmm. are so far the best for our health as much as they've had worse implications on the economy and it's horrible and people don't have employment you know we make sure that we are safe first you know mm-hmm. and i still believe south africa will rise we are hustlers by nature <laughs> um there there is a chance for us and we will grow and as much as it doesn't seem like it right now we will we will overcome and there's certain um you know things that are already in place to help us overcome it just won't happen overnight you know mm-hmm. there's certain projects in place with with um com- big companies that are trying to you know sort of reduce the risks and the worst that has happened to us so that we can actually have a tomorrow a flipping south africa you know mm-hmm. yeah they may not get emotional about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i think it's done in part yeah i think it's done yes. in part mm-hmm. i think it's done in part and to close things off your favorites mm-hmm. among the top 30 semi finalists for me south africa this year who are you rooting for <laughs> Oh, no, you seem so far. No comment. <laughs> um, you know, you know I get so emotional because I train so many 
I train so many young women who really have the dream of walking that stage, and I always say, yeah. I wish every um, I, I, if it were up to me, three thousand girls would walk on that stage because it's okay. one of a kind of an experience, mm-hmm. um, and what it does for your growth is impeccable. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is so hard for me. I can never say it because every everyone is just so astounding, and you're putting me under pressure. But um, yeah, I think it's quite a strong group. Every year we're excited, we're shocked, we don't know who it's going to be. Um, yeah, but I'm, we're watching closely. Let's see what happens. I'm normally ask me this question after the top ten. This time after all, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> after top ten, okay, no, no problem, no pressure, no pressure. Know. Yes, <laughs> no pressure. I'll ask the question after the top ten. Yeah. But thank you so mm-hmm. much for joining us this evening. This is a bonus episode, and it's so exciting. And yeah, you've been amazing, and all the best with Mukumi pageants, and all the best in your career as well. Let us have a voice. That is that is Let my closing statement. Let us have a voice, girl. Let us have- <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It was really lovely being here. Have a great evening. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>